Hi everyone, in today's video I'm going to show you an overnight ATV trip we took in the beautiful island of Cape Breton, Nova Scotia, Canada. For us it required an hour and a half road trip to the causeway that joins it to the mainland. We took an old rail bed that's converted now to a multi-use trail and it's called the Cayley Coastal Trail. It's almost 100 kilometers or roughly 60 miles from Troy to Inverness. It's an easy ride with ever-changing beautiful scenery. I highly recommend this trip if you live in the area or if you're willing to travel. For those of you that are not familiar with Nova Scotia, Canada, there's two parts to the province. There's the mainland and then there's the island of Cape Breton which is attached with a causeway. And at the end of the causeway is a bridge that actually rotates to let large ships through. Sometimes when you go across to Cape Breton you get stuck waiting for that to move but I think I've only ever had that happen once. The Cayley Coastal Trail starts in the background right where those blue buildings are and uh, there's a parking lot if you want to walk the trail you can park there and leave from there but if you're hauling ATVs or side-by-sides like we are you have to drive a few more miles up the road uh, to Troy to park. This is the causeway right here from the mainland over to Cape Breton. And uh, in this trip in, in June, what we did was as soon as we crossed the causeway, there's a parking lot right here where the Celtic Shores Coastal Trail starts. Uh, we parked our trucks and trailers right there and jumped on the trail right here. You can't do that anymore. Um, we followed this th uh, slim piece of coastline all the way up for a few kilometers up the trail here. It was actually quite fun but it's really eroded and washed away quite bad now and it's not really safe so they've got it blocked off once you get to this point here you can't cross uh, there's two big uh, giant boulders and stuff that they have there so what you have to do is just drive this Cayley Trail Highway right up to here I think it's called the Celtic Shores Coastal Trail uh, parking lot and there's a sign right here on the highway you can't miss it so drive in park your trucks and trailer here and then leave and you know what if you're coming from uh, a far distance there's all kinds of hotels, um, like cabins and things like that along the uh, along this trail, like this one right here. Uh, if you come and spend the night here before you hit the trail with your ATVs, you could probably park there, and I'm sure those people would let you leave your trucks and trailers for a couple of days if you want to go ATVing. So this is us leaving from that parking lot I was telling you about. You can still park if you're just planning on walking or cycling. Uh, you can park here although even on a bike I don't know if I would recommend leaving from here but definitely if you're walking and if you're driving ETVs you get to drive a few miles up the road first. It really is too bad that you can't drive along here anymore with ATVs because it was really cool but it really makes no difference because the trail for the next 60 miles or 100 kilometers is really fantastic anyways but this section right here was uh, pretty unique. Yeah. When we were driving through this section here, uh, some of it was really obvious about where you should be driving. You could see the trail marks, uh, the wheel marks and everything from other machines, and some sections you just couldn't tell at all. Uh, we knew the general direction we wanted to go, and uh, we just kept going and, and figuring it out as we went.
because you're driving along so much coastline every now and then you come to an opening like this where there's a beach so we decided to go in and get out and uh of our machines and go walk in the water for a bit because it was so hot it was over 90 degrees uh, fahrenheit This spot here that we're at now, uh, we decided to just stop and the guys get out and did some fishing. And man, it seems like every time they threw their hooks in the water, they were catching something, but they were letting them go. And uh, it was such a pretty spot. I threw my drone up and was getting some fantastic footage. And there's a bridge behind us that I was trying to fly underneath with uh, and kind of lost my line of sight and ended up crashing my drone and losing it. So I don't have any of that footage to show you. And uh, I ended up getting a new drone after that, a Mavic Air. But uh, so any of you who follow my channel, you would have seen the footage from that drone in my Newfoundland videos from last year. But I'm going to go do this trip again this year and go even farther. So I'll uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you'll see me make a new video of this trip and I will definitely have lots of drone footage in it. Little baby striper. See the whack of them? That's what's in here. Little baby striper. <laughs> hey, that was the first cast. I, it was the first cast <laughs> with a green lure. Look at that. When we started, we left from the causeway and we decided to go to Inverness, but we didn't make it that far. We ended up going to uh, West Mabu which is uh, over here. Paul ended up having a bit of trouble with his machine. It got, uh, he didn't realize uh, his, his low oil pressure like came on. He checked it and his oil was really, uh, uh, looked like bare, bare bones there for a while. So uh, we stopped into Port Hood over here and found a gas station where we could get some oil for his machine. And, uh, but it took us a while to find that because we're not familiar with the area. But after we got uh, his machine all fixed up, we decided to look for something closer and the gas station attendant actually was very helpful and told us about this trail. Uh, this is actually paved road right here. So we had to drive on that for a bit and then get to this dirt road, which takes us up along the uh, the coast up here to West Mabu. And we stayed at this uh, this place here called the Cayley Cottage and Campgrounds. Cottages and Campgrounds. It's a really nice spot. And just back the road a little bit before, there's, a, there's an entrance to a beach here, which you can drive your ATV up to this road so far. And then you have to walk in the rest of the way. And here's what that dirt road looked like on the way to the cabins. It's funny how quickly the temperature can change when you're driving along the coast. Uh, the, the air started to get pretty cool and uh, with just a t-shirt on, so I decided to get a, uh, a windbreaker. Mm. 
When we got to where we were going, we uh, we checked in, we got all of our gear and put it inside the cabins. And Paul brought the barbecue and he bought a brand new one and it wasn't even put together yet. So we, we had to struggle for a little bit to figure out how to put it together. It, it wasn't very difficult, but it was a little time consuming. And then uh, we cooked up a great supper. We came across this gravel hill uh, near the ocean. We wanted to drive up there and get a nice view of the water on the other side. And it was a little trickier than it looked, but uh, we got up there and for the most part, Ed had a bit of a, a difficult time at first just because I think he forgot his machines in two wheel drive. And then he just put it in four wheel drive and picked another line. That line that Jeff was just trying was beat down so bad that he had to back out and take another line too. So this is the section here you can't drive on anymore. As always, thank you so much for watching. And if you haven't subscribed yet, please consider doing so if you like this video and clicking the like button. It would help me out a lot. Stay safe out there, everyone.